Tarzan and the Diamond of our share. Because of the prospective marriage of Jim Porter and Cecil Clayton, falsely representing himself as Lord Greystoke, Tarzan had concealed the fact that he and not Clayton was the true heir to the title. Since Clayton's confession and death, Tarzan has assumed his birthright, the Greystoke estates, fortune, and title. Following the departure of Jane, her father, and Philander for America, Tarzan and Darno have gone to the French-African port of Mango, where they meet the father and sister of the lost archaeologist Brian Gregory. Tarzan is lured to a room in the hotel by a woman and two men who mistake him for the missing archaeologist and there an attempt is made on his life. Dono, meanwhile, worried at the prolonged absence of his friend, learns from Mitchell, the hotel manager, that Tarzan was seen mounting the stairs in the company of a man and a woman. A man and a woman, Monsieur Mitchell? Yes, by Jove. And a look as she was too, Lieutenant. Uh, please come with me, Monsieur Mitchell. Lord Greystoke would not remain away from his friends unless for a very good reason. You don't think there's anything wrong? I don't think. I know, Mitchell. Listen. By Jove, I say. There seems to be a bally row on. There, in 204. Tarzan! Here, do know. Open the door, Tarzan. It is locked. I'm busy. Break it down. Come on, Mitchell. Right, you old chap. Now, together. Yeah. Turn on the lights, Darno. Quick. Tune near the breast. What in the name of 10,000 devils? The window. The others must be on the veranda. The others? But there is no one on the veranda. But they can't be very far. Tell the manager. Right here, Greystoke. What's the valley row? Oh, uh, I didn't see you, Mitchell. I've had a little argument with some of your guests. Argument? Great Scott, Greystoke. It sounded more like a war of extermination. And by Jove, it looks worse. Uh, who's what you got there? One of your guests. He tried to knife me, and uh, you'd better get him to a hospital. Of course, old chap. But what happened? Well, this fellow and some others got me up here thinking I was Brian Gregory. They threatened me, and, well, I had to fight my way out. Uh, that man on the floor. I've never seen him. This room is assigned to a gentleman by the name of Tome. Well, it's all over. Get this fellow to a hospital, and I'll question him later. May Tarzan, there is more to it than that. That no. That's all there was to it, Darno. I'll handle this my own way. I, I understand, mon ami. Then we'll rejoin our friends in the grill. And, Mitchell, say nothing about my being mistaken for Gregory's son. Of course not, old chap. As you say, you know best how to handle the situation. And you look after this fellow? Uh, yes. Come on, Darno. Let's go downstairs. Hello, mon vieux. What is this all about? I don't understand it myself. But there's some connection between these people and Brian Gregory. I stopped you from talking about the note and the woman before Mitchell. Well, she tried to help me. Help you? After deceiving you? Uh... How did you get into that room? When they kept on insisting I was Brian Gregory, I went out of curiosity. But who is that man upstairs with Mitchell? He is most certainly hors de combat. They call him Lal Tosk. Lal Tosk? Yes. Lal Tosk. A Mongolian or Tibetan. But how do you suppose the others got away so quickly? There's a stairway leading down to the garden from the side veranda. Of course you comprend. And the man who got away with the woman, who was he? Atan Tom. He appeared to be their chief. Atan. Hmm. Why, if I am not mistaken, Atan means chief in the ancient Egyptian or Chaldean language. And so, you see, this woman tried to help you after getting you into the difficulty. Strange, mon ami. Yes. She called to Tom not to shoot when he threatened me with the gun and then switched off the lights. I'll tell you all about it later, Darno. Remember, not a word to the Gregories. 
I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Gregory, but... Uh, You see, uh, some of Lord Greystoke's uh, friends who were so delighted to see him, they did not wish to let him go. Uh, But suppose we step into this alcove where we may be alone, eh? Now, you were saying, Mademoiselle Gregory, when we left... I was saying that because no visible trace was found of Brian, we think he must be still alive. I wouldn't bank too heavily on that. It's possible, but not probable. What do you intend doing, Gregory? It's my intention to organize an expedition immediately and go in search of my... And you, Miss Gregory? I'm going with Dad, of course. I strongly advise against such a plan. I think you should return to London or await the outcome of the expedition in Nairobi. I've done much to keep Helen out of this, but she's a chip off the old block, I suppose. Once her mind's made up, there's no stopping her. Hmm. Uh, Have you any idea, Gregory, as to what part of the country your son was in or making for when he disappeared? All I can tell you is that he was somewhere near the junction of the Ubangi and Congo rivers. At least that's where his last letter to Helen said he was going. Where was that letter posted? Right here in Luango. It was the last letter we had. As a souvenir, he sent me a map of the country he was going into. A map? What sort of map? No, I don't imagine it's at all accurate because it's one he sketched himself. But we thought it might help. Are there any towns or cities marked on it? Yes. There was a place called Ajaka at the bottom of the map. Then there was the Ubangi River with several places named, and a range of hills or mountains, and... Oh, yes, on the other side of a circle, marked 2 Baka, extinct volcano, there was a cross with the words under it, Asher must be about here. I'll go up to our rooms and get the map. Oh, never mind. I'll look at it in the morning. You're sure that cross was marked Asher? Oh, yes, positive. Lord Greystoke, do you know the place? I... I've heard of it. And not long ago... Did your brother in that last letter mention any friends such as Magra or Lal Tosk or Tom? Tom. Tom. Why, Randolph, one of the men who was with the expedition, mentioned that name in his report on their return to Chicago. A man by the name of Tom and a woman, supposedly his daughter, joined the expedition on this second trip. You don't mean to tell us you know them, Lord Greystoke? I, uh, I've had the pleasure of meeting them once. In a heavily curtained back room of a musty and insignificant curio shop close by the hotel, Magra and Atan Tome discussed the latter's unsuccessful attempt to gain possession of the map of our share from the supposed Brian Gregory. No, Magra. There is no doubt about it. The man's voice, build even the scar on his forehead, prove him beyond all doubt to be Brian Gregory. Then why should he wish to conceal his identity? The diamond of our share answers that question. Uh, yet you do not think he has it? Ah, but he has something of equal value. The map showing the location of the mountain of Tuanbaka, in which the city of Asher, according to the legend, is located. The father of diamonds, Magra, is in Asher. But, but how can you be sure, Atan, the map is accurate? Gregory was with Makumbo, the greatest of the house of witch doctors, when the old man died. He tended Makumbo to the last and received through the old one's gratitude the legend of the Hesihasarians and the great diamond. And the map? Makumba drew a sand map for Gregory, which Gregory copied on the hide of a leopard with his own blood, and later recopied with the story of the legend in his diary. And which, without his knowledge, you found and read. Why did you not make a copy of the map then? I had no time. Gregory was suspicious of everyone. You spoke to as though you knew he had been to the city of Ashir and had escaped. <laughs> that was a shot in the dark. After the body of Gomez was found, presumably killed by wild beasts, Gregory vanished. Gregory killed Gomez because he tried to steal the map and the diary containing the legend of the Hesiharians. And you think Brian Gregory went alone in search of the city of Asher? Yes. That is why I abandoned the expedition and left you in Umukin. I returned to search for Gregory. With his map, I would have found this city and the diamond. But if Brian Gregory has found this city, why should he be here now? He probably discovered that he could not enter our share single-handed, so he returned to organize an expedition. You, Magra, must manage to join that expedition and get the map. Understand? Magra understands. <laughs> in the Metropole Grill, Helen Gregory and her father are discussing their proposed expedition with Tarzan and Darlow with the hope of finding, if not their brother and son, at least some trace of him. This man, Tome, 
Did he and his daughter return to America with the expedition, Gregory? No. Randolph said they left the expedition shortly after Brian disappeared. They left the safari in the jungle alone? I believe so. Of course, they took a few bearers. And rather an unusual procedure on this part. Oh, so I was thinking. And when do you want to start for the interior, Gregory? Just as soon as possible. Your advice, Grace, still could be invaluable. According to Lord and Lady Tennington, there is no one who knows the jungle better, excepting a man whom they referred to as uh, Tarzan. Tarzan? <laughs> yes, a peculiar name, isn't it? But Lord Tennington said if we could get this Tarzan to take charge of our expedition, we'd have no trouble. And we would find Brian if he is still alive. Well, whether he'll go with you or not, I can't say. What do you think, Darno? Je ne sais pas, mon vieux. It is possible. I may even say it is very probable. Do you know him too, Lieutenant? Mademoiselle Gregory, I consider Tarzan as the best friend I have or ever shall have. Yes, I know him very well. When can we see him, Greystoke? Is he around now? Yes, he happens to be in Luongo. I'll have him here in the morning. He'll take breakfast with you. Now, uh, Lieutenant Darno and I have some business. If you'll pardon us, we'll say good night. Good night, Lord Greystoke. Don't forget your friend Tarzan at breakfast. He'll be here. Good night. But, Tarzan, what business can we have at this time of night? We're going to the hospital. I want to question Lao Ah, oui, I see. Right over there, and we'll be back in a little while. Uh, why did you tell Mademoiselle Monsieur Gregory that you are Tarzan, huh? Mm, I don't know. Why didn't you tell them? <laughs> the same reason, I imagine. It would have ruined a few very amusing moments at breakfast tomorrow. But uh, here is the hospital. Shall I go in with you? Uh, yes. Oh, good evening, gentlemen. What can I do for you? A man was brought here from the Metropole a little while ago. We came to see him. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, uh, Mr. Trosk or something like that. Uh, but it's pretty late to see patients. No, uh... this man is a police patient. To be held for questioning. That's why we're here. Oh. Oh, in that case, uh, uh, come this way, please. Uh, he was brought over by a couple of hotel porters. But there was nothing said about his being a police patient. Uh, we put him in his end room here. Uh, Mr. Trosk, someone to see you, sir. Mr. Trosk. <laughs> He's probably asleep, sir. Mr. Trosk, I say, wake up. Uh, one moment, doctor. Lal Trosk. Wake up. Ah. Doctor, this man is dead. What? More? Dead. Is this the man who was brought from the hotel? Why, yes, the only patient to come in tonight, sir. Well, either someone else was brought in his place or our man escaped. 